Well, there you are. Welcome back to 3D Printing Your Studios, proudly powered by PCB Way, and welcome to the workshop. This is the place within our sound stage that I get to make a mess of things. I get to assemble stuff. I get to break stuff. I get to build stuff. One of the things that we're gonna do today, featuring the Prusa XL, we're going to build and assemble the Sumo enclosure from 3D Sorcerer. I saw this a while ago on social media and I was like, OMG, I want that. And sure enough, he sent it over for me to show you how to put it together. The assembly guide I have on my computer here, my goal is to put it to use because I've got a problem. We have sort of a problem here. Well, hold on, let me show you. Within the sound stage here, it is not necessarily the most dry environment. In fact, take a look. That 515 you see is the carbon dioxide level, but up there in the corner, what do you see there? 54 degrees relative humidity, 54 degrees. And when we talk about 3D printing, especially with a machine like this, we talk about the moisture content of filament and how that can degrade your 3D printing experience. What I have is actually something that I utilized for this project, and let me show you. This, right here, this is the Sunlu S4 filament dryer. And I utilized it on this project because I printed with nearly three kilograms of PETG. And as we all know, PETG is hygroscopic, not hydro, but hygro. Really? Tell me about that. Hygroscopic means the material is going to absorb moisture from the atmosphere. And the higher the relative humidity, the more moisture there is in your air, and the more moisture there is in your air, the more chance of the PETG or whatever material you're using can absorb that. The S4 can hold up to four filaments, which is kind of nice because this is Protopasta's High Five Blue Pet G which prints like a dream when it's properly dried. And I also utilized a whole bunch of the Prusament Orange Pet G, which also prints like a dream when it's properly dried. And that's what this machine took care of. You're able to feed the material from the machine into the machine. If I put an enclosure around this, but I have material hanging off the side, inside here, we can regulate the humidity with an enclosure, this sumo enclosure, but outside we can't do that. And so this takes care of the material before it goes into your enclosed 3D printer. They've actually sponsored this look at their machine. And I find it really fascinating because I, I'm not going to take a product and tell you about it unless I believe in it. And I actually use this for days and days and days. The sumo enclosure, isn't just a assembled thing, it's a kit. And all of the parts are 3D printable, well, at least most of them, except for the acrylic panels and the things like screws and nuts and bolts and doohickeys, you know, stuff like that. Those are the parts that are shipped from 3D Sorcerer, then the rest of it, you get to print. So here are the parts from 3D Sorcerer. I gotta go get the prints. All parts printed on the Prusa XL and some of the parts I did in the High Five Blue Protopasta Pet G, such as this one right here. I love the look of it. Uh, for the Prusa Mint and the Protopasta stuff, of course, I'll put links down below. It's good stuff. Yeah, baby. I gotta make some space because I need the laptop to follow the directions and I need the XL here because we're putting stuff onto the XL. Like I said, this is a workshop. This is where we make a mess. This is gonna be all the bolts, the nuts, M5 by 12 bolts, 150 of them, 150 of them. This might take a while. These are gonna be all the acrylic panels. Warning, before you start, please review the assembly guide. Ah, it's as bad as a phone book. I printed the right parts. I sure did, unplug. Check.
So there are parts for different XLs. There's ones with rear antenna, side antenna, and uh, the back plate. And I've, I've got grid and I've got a side antenna. And I think I printed the parts for the rear antenna. Rear antenna, I believe just has an extension on it. Not too bad. Uh, side antenna, I don't know if anything has to happen because the enclosure just kind of happens around it. So let's see what happens. That really fits. I need a vacation. Check out my nameplate. It's gonna go right there. Wow, that is a tight fit. Okay. It's gonna be dope. Oh shoot. Okay. I convinced it a little too hard. Sometimes I forget how uh, brittle Benji <laughs> is. Okay. Acrylic. There we go. Okay, this is the filament uh, roll offset and it prevents it from scratching things. So it goes right here, or at least mine will go right here. Usually there's this piece and you replace it with that piece and then it goes right there. There we go. Uh, I, I did accidentally print the wrong piece. So the Prusa XL that I have has an antenna on the side. Some have antennas in the back and the pieces are different for that. So what I'm gonna do is uh, reprint this, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna drill a hole for the antenna to fit. Perfect. Insert the hygrometer into position. Very, very top. The one with the hygrometer goes like that. I think that's it. I think all we have to do now is put the hat on. Okay. Holy cow. Doesn't even fit in the frame. So let's, let's summarize. Okay, Sunlu S4 filament dryer dried three kilograms worth of PET-G. In order to do all of these parts, a big thanks to Sunlu for sponsoring the filament drying for this project. I used Prusament's Orange PET-G and Protopasta High 5 Blue PET-G. I did a multicolor print up top to have 3D printing nerd on there. The assembly went okay. I don't think the model has issues. I think my choice of materials might have been suspect. There might be shrinkage with PET-G that isn't associated with PLA, but I thought PET-G, ASA, ABS are the proper materials for an enclosure. So if you have opinions on that and you made it this far, please leave them down in the comments section below. And I did print the wrong parts, but I was able to drill a hole and fit the antenna. Well, this is built and I still have things to do because the, the filament uh, spool holders right here, there's that little offset and I need to print a bunch more. I'm excited to get this running within the enclosure and I'm excited to see what sort of multi-material opportunities this unlocks for me. Multi ABS prints, multi ASA prints, multi PET G prints, multi PC prints, multi TPU print. Take your pick. I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments below because I'm really jazzed to finally get this going. Last but not least, I think I'm gonna leave this. My little tape job. I'm gonna reach out to Andrews at 3D Gloop and see if I can't acquire some PET G 3D Gloop, but this, this here reminds me of the build and the day and being able to record this and share it with you. And I'll always be able to look at that and say we persevered even through tragedy to get this done. And I'm really thankful I was able to do that. Uh, 3D Sorcerer is the one that made this enclosure and I'll put a link to that down below. But holy friggin' cow! We're done. Like, look at my fingers. They are dirty beyond compare from dealing with all this. And it's now 5.20 in the afternoon. 
My son's baseball game started at four and my wife's been texting me updates. Let's see how they're doing. One, one going into third inning. All right, good luck team. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and print all the friggin' things. Welcome to the workshop. And as always, high five.